So I've wanted to create a video game for a while now, and I recently had an idea giving me an excuse to finally make one. So I was playing around in Python and realized by constantly printing things to the console and slightly altering them, it worked like a flipbook where you can animate things. I thought that would be a cool idea for games graphics. All the Python console games I've ever seen are text-based games, but this one would have rudimentary printer graphics in the ASCII style. Although ASCII art could represent a high-def or 3D game, the Python print function can only run and display text so fast. In the final game to prevent lag, I had to set a fixed FPS for that reason. That also meant I had to limit the game down in both the size and graphics, with the levels looking something like this. As for the point of the game, it was mostly to see if this idea could work, so there isn't any intricate storyline. The goal of the game is for the player, an O, to reach a plus sign and move on to the next level. Walls are hashtags, spikes which are represented by these characters kill the player, and the main enemy is an asterisk that constantly moves in the direction of the player to kill them. The asterisk, although its speed is the same, is impossible to outmaneuver, so to get past you usually have to trap or pin the asterisk somewhere, like in this tutorial level. So that's the idea. I'm sure somebody has done this before, but I couldn't find anything on it. The closest thing I saw was an ASCII art dice rolling simulator, which did look pretty cool. Anyway, this is how it works. So before I go over the code, it's worth saying I'm relatively new to Python and don't know how all the methods for doing things work, or how to simplify and make my code more efficient. If you do have any suggestions, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll be super grateful. So the code for the game mostly revolves around list manipulation. The player and the enemy get coordinates, and then those coordinates in a background list are replaced with the characters that represent the player and enemy. To help with simplicity, the levels are in a separate text document that is pulled from and then appended to lists one byte at a time. There are 24 individual lists that are all part of a nested list to make an X and a Y axis. To move, the player enters W, A, S, or D, which is interpreted using the keyboard module. To make the walls work, I created Boolean values for whether or not the player can move up by looking for the list values above, below, left, and right, and checking what they are. If the player can move there, and the inputs to do so are high, then the value will be changed accordingly. After that, it also analyzes whether the player touched a spike, and if so, restarts the level. All of this is happening simultaneously for the asterisks, except that it's always moving towards the player, and the spikes also act like walls. Then, after that, the code evaluates whether or not the player should be dead, whether the player finished the game, and whether the player should move on to the next level. The next function replaces the background with player and enemy characters, and then finally, the entire list prints to the console. The auto scroll keeps what you see at the most recent frame, and it really does look like a normal game, just with really bad graphics and a really slow FPS. There will be a link in the description for the full code, and lastly here is what the level document looks like. Right now I only have 5, but that's not a limit, I'm just lazy and don't like making levels. So there's the final playthrough. If you're watching very closely, you might have noticed in the last level the asterisks erase one of the hashtags. That's a glitch I've been having where the outermost hashtag on the line can be erased if the asterisks or players moving diagonal at it. Not really sure why it does it, but it's not a big deal anyway. Uh, but with all that, I was really happy with how the game turned out, and it definitely worked better than I expected. I know it's not really an achievement, but I do think the idea was cool and I'm excited to experiment more with it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.